We've got a truck bed, Lance truck bed camper in here. We got it sitting up on our old GMC. This one has a slide out. And some of the other problems that we ran into, the way these are supported. I don't know exactly the framing behind this, but it, it appears to me that whatever stock is behind there isn't really adequate enough to carry the rest of this, this whole assembly. And it's just starting to really pull on everything. I'll show you in the back. This one has a slide out on here. But you'll see this one back here. You can see how much of a lean this has right there. And somebody just kept putting more anchors in there, more bolts in there to try to anchor it together. But if it just has that little aluminum frame in there, like I'm thinking, then it's not going to be strong enough. What happens is you're just going to make Swiss cheese out of it. Look at over here, they just kept putting you know more bolts in here and just try to see. But every time you do it, you're taking away the strength of the aluminum because it's not really a heavy duty aluminum, it's just it's really light alloy. The other thing I didn't like about the way they designed this is they have this attached to the bumper. So you know your most of your framing is down here. That's where your structural strength is. This should have been down here, meaning the strength of holding the coach, of actually keeping the coach tight with all the weight, should have been leashed to the bumper somehow. And then this should be your stabilizer to prevent it from going left, right, in, or out. That's the way it should, so it really should be reversed. Unless they have some heavy duty stock in there that I'm not aware of. And we're going to explore a little bit of this. And we have the same problem in the front. So most of them are all kind of like that. And it's, uh, when you set this thing down, it reminds me like a, a newborn deer, a fawn, I guess, with the way they kind of try to walk. And their legs are all sticking the wrong way, I'm trying to get their bearings about them, so to say. Let me see how I go around here. So what we're doing right now is just setting up some railings and everything. That's the way we work these. Make everything safe. But this is the other one on the front. This is a passenger side front. So they put some in here. But this should have been, in my opinion, should have had a plate come all the way down so it's carrying this load. So everything's sitting right on here. And that's carrying it. And this is just bolting it back together. That's the way it should be. But it's not. And like I said, we're going to have to explore this a little bit and see what's going on. And then uh, we're going to be putting a new roof on there, so let's go, let's go trot up there and take a look at that roof. Alright, here's what we got. It was so much easier to put on the truck to work than to try to set it down we've had done other lances where we've lowered them down and worked on them that way we would had scaffold out there and i had it in front of this truck but uh, this is just a lot easier we can actually get right up in here and, and work so these uh these type of plumbing caps i don't really like a lot of times you'll get water that can get right down inside there and it'll leak so if you have one of these you have to make sure you seal in there really well because it'll get down there's a screw right here there's a screw here, and the same on that one, there's a screw. So water can get down in there and just hit that screw and come back out. So, and even this pipe is kind of missing. So the water can get behind this little piece and get behind that pipe and just drool down. It won't make it to the pipe. That pipe should have been extended up. You can see how this isn't even sticking here. This is that great silicone. Do not use silicone. This is junk. It doesn't. It won't stick. It will not stick to this. Every bit of it's loose. All the way around here, even. You can see it all loose right there. Well, that's not sticking at all. And well, obviously we're just getting started here, so we haven't even got the covers off those uh, the vents right there. With that cargo holder, and I'm gonna be putting a different antenna on here as well. And you can see how dry this is. But if you have one of these antennas, these crank ups, water can run down this here and go in that tiny little hole right here, that little crack right there, and it'll run down inside the coach. So if you have one, the best way to do this is you just pull this up and see if somebody put some booger under it. If they didn't, then well, that's what you want to do. It's just on there. Look, there it goes. See how 
that hole is right there this is already dry and split this piece is but the water will trickle right down the wire get under the boot here trickle down the wire and then it'll go in here into the coach and that's what will cause your leak so um, what else we got going on here that I can see right off the top of my head we'll end up ta obviously taking all this apart That's, uh, I believe this is for um, solar setup. That's, I'm pretty sure it is. All right, so we'll be making you know all the curves for these, and this will have to be one curb. It'll contain this, this, and this all at once. Kind of similar to this one right here. Uh, this one's all one. It'll be the same. It's just designed a little different than that one that I have there. That was actually a, a mistake from. Miss measurement. One of the guys was saying what it was and when I made it. It did not fit. Anyhow, but it's a good demonstration. Here you go, some more plumbing right here. Same thing inside there. Keep that in mind. Somebody sealed all this because these are hard to seal. And when you put those screws in there, then you have to make sure all this is sealed because water can still get underneath and kind of circulate around. So we're going to this will be, uh, we'll put these up on a frame, you know, on some boots and everything, get elevated. So, and uh, this turn bar is just simple. It doesn't have a screw insert cover at all. You, know, you can see how low that air conditioner is. That's where you start getting some of the problems because it's going to want to drain and it won't be able to drain too much when you get all that debris. You can see all the, the debris like pollen and dirt and just dust and everything collects under there. Clog, it'll clog that when it clogs it then uh, it's still going to drain but it'll build up inside the pan and it'll roll back into the coach so you'll end up getting leaks that way uh, this is uh, I think an escape hatch right here that's about it so far we're gonna have to clean up around these windows down here we'll clean them up and uh, same around that, everything we're gonna go around the whole coach on this one and uh, make sure it's all set. I'm trying to charge these batteries up right here. We'll go around here as well. Around this is the top of the door. But we're going to go around this whole entire coach on this particular one. That is in the work order. And then, uh, what else we had? We had to check down there. I thought there might have been some delamination or something in this corner. But again, when I start working on all this to figure out this mess, then I'll know uh, exactly what we got going on under there. And typically I like to advise people of what we come across if it's not specifically in the work order to see if they want to do it. But um, well that's so far that's our that's our lance so we'll keep you in the loop right on the next clip you'll see how far we get. So obviously the goal is to get everything off the roof. Once we get it all down check the roof deck make sure the roof deck is nice and solid and sound and if it needs to be redecked we'll end up redecking the roof then we'll get the roofing on there get the material up on there glue it down get all our curves made and that's typically what they do is just strip it so we can find out exactly what we got do we have to do we have all the material here if not get it ordered real quick or go buy it whichever we got to do so. this is the back driver's corner and we took this this is the bracket where the leg was and what I noticed is that there were two pieces there's a flat stock piece here there's an angle here so right now I'm trying to you see how much caulking they wadded in here? It looks like it may have gotten down in there. That's what I'm looking for. See what damage may have been done. Really want to look at the structure as well. I'm trying to get this freed up. Talking on here. Ah. I'll try and work this free and then I'll, I'll show you some more. I can hear it breaking loose when I'm looking at this right here. It looks like it's cracking. See that? Let me put the camera down and I'll see what I get going on. I'll figure out what's going on here. So I got this piece off, as you can see. That is wood. Show you the camera in there. That's all wood. And they kept putting in those big bolts. So what they've done is they've split that wood 
it is all there's still one more bolt right there that was never showing but that's all now that's all rotted inside there I don't know how far, how far. but I'm probably gonna have to loosen some stuff up and figure it out that was why it was all kicking the way it was so we're gonna have to figure this out we'll take all this all this right here we'll take all that down and then all this we'll take that and we'll open this up and then uh, see what's going on in there and this a while back I guess somebody had done some repairs on this so this may be all kind of related but I've got four of these to do and if they're all in wood if they are that's probably the biggest problem I see right there that little two by two that's all it is that thing is going to be able to handle all that stress coming down and all those that's what happened it split all the wood split all that wood in there that's what it is let's see if we get some more light in here get a little closer maybe you can see better that's what it was this is that piece that I was talking about that it was that was starting to crack that one there so there's just all caulking in here let's clear that portion of this out of the other way there we go Right, yep, see, that's all, that's all rotted in there, all that is. Gotta get my knife. And all that is all, that's all wood right in there, it's all rotted. That's it. Let's open her up. May have to do some surgery. This is the sheathing behind the fiberglass right here. That's what this is right there. Right there. And then you got the thin layer of fiberglass right here. That's what that is. Okay. So we're going to have to go in and see what's going on with all this here. But I also noticed a little buckle right here. This has got a dip in it. Like it's kind of going this way. Got a little pucker right here. Right in that area. So let's take some more apart and see what we got going on. Okay. I took this, uh, this is just a screw cap cover that goes on there, like this one is. They just pop right out. They just literally just pop right out. So a good indicator is how much how much rot we got in there, or damage, or moisture. They take these out. See the screws? Rusty. That tells me it got some issues going on in there. That one's spinning. Now that one's, look at this one here. It's still spinning. See how rusty they are? The water been getting down on there, but it's not so much the head. Sometimes you're gonna have some moisture on there because of the cover that's on there. I'll show you that the way this cover goes. See, it just snaps in. It snaps in. And moisture can still get in over here on this side. See, the moisture can get in there. But sometimes you may have a rusty you know, head on the screw. But when you start pulling them out and you start seeing all that rust on there, that's indicative that there's some issues behind this. So that's what we're, again, I'm gonna take all this apart and I gotta find out what's going on because this thing is, it was just all cattywampus. I was actually nervous. I thought the legs were gonna kick out at one given point. That was why we put it on our truck. So we got this big old six wheeler here. I actually bought this truck just for these things because I've had a, quite a few come in and they're hard to move around. So I uh, kind of lucked out and found it with the same axle, the spacing, it's just like uh, a one ton, got real uh, short, the width on the axle on these is, on this truck is, is shorter than a regular six wheeler that size, so yeah, it's a good old dog, just old 87 carbureted GMC, that's all it is, so, but uh, let's get back to this here and I'll tear some more off, this is a back passenger's corner, so you can look at these screws, they don't look too bad from here. I took this one out. Take this one out. Let's see what it is. See how rusty it is? Look at how rusty that screw is. And the head of it looked good. You can probably see a little better here. We're going to find out what's going on with that one. Over there, what they did is. Uh, it split the wood, and I'll show you that, but I'm probably gonna have to remove this, this back wall, but I wanted to kind of hop around and see what I'm in for, is why I'm trying to work and move right along. But some of this stuff I like to show you is 
so you can see. Like if you're going to, going to inspect a coach and you're looking at it, I mean, this isn't factory. This is not factory right here. And look at this plate right here. So somebody's patched all this. Why are they doing all those patches? So you want to kind of, this is an easy way to, all you do is just pull that, this, this plastic spline out. This is just a square drive. That's all it is, a number two square drive. Check out a couple screws. And you're about to buy it. If, you, if they're all rusty inside there, I'd be really uh, concerned that you get some, some rot behind there because it's the only way the screw's going to, that's the only way it's going to uh, rust out, right? If there's moisture behind there. So, and look at the, especially on this one, because these screws, they look well. Oh, they look okay. Well, you start taking one out, and then you go, hey, wait a minute, something going on. You had leaks back there. Now you can determine whether you want to get it or how much you're going to put into it, maybe negotiate the price, whatever. But they just give you some heads up of what's going on. So let me take this, and I want to try to get the front two as well. Those are really bad. I got to figure them out. So I just wanted to see what's going on with all this. I did what we got. Look at that rock. There's our puffs up there. So now I'm trying to explore, see how much we got in here. But you can, I can already see it through there. See it? Look at all that rot in there. This whole corner is both of these corners. I'll bet all four of them are rotted out. That's my guess. So. I'm just trying to, it might be a little better with that light in there. So, I'm going to have to open this up right here. All they do is, all they do is put that piece on there. It didn't solve the problem. It was structural issues. And that's why this whole thing is not sitting right. And one of the reasons why you put it on the truck. We know we got rod right in there. And I gotta come up here and I gotta see what's going on inside there. On the other side, they have um, the framing stopped, so it looks like it was spliced together. So I wanna see if it's the same. I don't know why it was spliced, but the, also the wood is really, you can see where they put all the these bolts, split that board. Yeah, and I'll show it to you when I get, get more into it. But that's what this one is. So all I did was just mop a whole bunch of caulking on here. And then in hopes that was going to solve the problem. So this is what it is. There's a board that comes down. See that same burp right here? I don't know if you can see it, but it's burping. Get out of the shadow there. It's burping outwards. Just like the other one was in about the same area. And what it looked like to me is somebody tried to do some work here. But there's two independent pieces in here. That's what I saw over there. At least that's what it looked until I actually get it more open. But that's what it kind of gave me the, the clue that it was. So, if I get this open enough, I'll, I'll show it to you. So I know this somebody had been working on here, because there's a Phillips screw. And they don't use these type of screws typically. That's a drywall screw. So somebody had been working on this here, and look where it's at. It's in there. So that's not the way they stitch these together when they put them in there. So I know they've got some issues in here. Get out of the light there. I'm gonna zoom in and see if this thing works. See how it split? It's split right there. And I'm trying to find the get a little flat bar right here. Just trying to stay out of the light there for you. But you can see. See how split that is? That's from all these big bolts right here. You can see the hole of the bolt is right there. Split it. You can't do that to these. You can't run these bolts through there. And you can see inside there, that's split too. And this is too. It's all split. This whole corner is just one loose section. You know, it's all loose in there now. But what it looked like, that where that burp is up here, that's what I was trying to get. They put this plate on, so I gotta free that plate up. But right in here, this two piece, there's a, this is one piece of wood where the, where the bar is. I'll bring the camera back. This one piece of bar right here, uh, one piece of wood that goes all the way down. You see, and you can see how rotted all that is. So that definitely has to come out. There's no strength in that at all to hold that, that whole jack assembly. So I'll have to, like I said, I'll figure something out for it for sure, but uh, it's got to be fixed one way or another. Got this other plate on here. So we'll end up taking that off, take the light off. And we'll move around the whole thing and see what we got. This is the front passengers. 
So they had all, obviously had all these screws. They had all different kinds of screws in here too. These ones are three eighths. These ones are a half over here. Three eighths half. So you have them going up in there. And then um, I went ahead and loosen this up. And then this was a Phillips. These are all square. And then over there, that's a regular. That's straight, you know, flathead, flathead. And then uh, this last two, I think those are Phillips down there. So they get a whole bunch of different screws in here. Well, what I did find out, which I needed to know, was how they built this. So inside here, there is a piece of 20 gauge metal. And if you know anything about sheet metal, 20 gauge is not very strong. It's used in commercial buildings, mainly for like partition walls. After they frame it up and they just need to make a wall, then they'll probably use 20 gauge just to frame a wall up. And this piece is just, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's a two by, it's a two by three, which is two and five eighths, which is what I thought. <clears throat> what they did is they put it up all the way up to about here. So that's just, uh, let's see, we've got just about maybe 14, 14 inches or so right here and for, for it to come down. This stops and then what they did is they let this piece on this side because it's, it's a tubing and they just let it come down they just folded it back underneath. So that's all that is. It's nothing fancy for sure. Uh, then what they did because they, because there were staples in this and that's kind of what threw me off right off the rip is how you're going to get a staple through there for those small staples they use they're not strong enough they'll, they'll bend they won't be able to go through that if it was a quality steel it wouldn't be able to go through so I pulled a couple of staples out once I figured that I was pulling staples out of steel that's how I kind of knew and it's only like I said it's only 20 gauge uh, underneath the 20 gauge is just your regular wood framing that's it. So it's got the wood going this way and this way. So I'm going to have to build, you know, fabricate some sort of carriage or something up underneath where my hand is to kind of carry this load. So I'll put all this back up like that. And then when we mount the leg back together, right up for the frame, there's a frame of it right here. And the plates are right here. So once we put all that back, this one went on this side. There'll be a big, we'll have to make a plate. We'll probably have to weld a plate to go up underneath this to carry that corner. You know, it can't handle that kind of load. It needs some, some support underneath there. So I'm sure the other side is the same way. So that's what we got. I don't think I need to tear any more of this apart now that I know what's going on with it. I, I know, and I'll, we'll be able to bolt it back together and then all the weight will be here and that should still allow these to carry the, uh, the load that it needs. But like I said, it's, I still don't like it, but what I like and what's going on are two different things. I mean, I'd have to tear this whole entire thing apart, try to get the whole water tank out to try to dig into there but then you still have a wall in there I'd have to dig a lot out and I think we could solve the problem just by making sure we had some strength up underneath here like where my hand is so they um, but this is a lance I can't remember what year it is I can probably find out but it's a lance and but for something of this size this unit I guess weighs close to 4,000 pounds 3,900 4,000 pounds um, and that's kind of heavy to put on a even a pickup truck uh, he pulls it, I think, with a, an F-350 or a one-ton anyways. But what I'm getting at is that's a lot of weight for this to be sitting on. You know, you're not going to have 4,000 pounds here, of course, but you'd be splitting the, the load in quadrants, so you'd have at least 1,000 pounds in each corner, if you want to look at it that way. And that isn't going to be enough to hold 1,000 pounds of pressure. Neither is the back, as I showed you. That's all, that's kind of junk. So I'm sure, and we got the same problem over there, and that's why they're walking, that's why they're not sitting straight and proper. But like I said, I'll, I'll get it all cinched together. All right, so I checked, and it looks like that this metal stud, it does go up a little higher. I don't know if that really matters, but it does go up higher. I checked it all the way to here, because at first I thought it was like, I don't know, 14 inches or so when I checked it. But even if it went up to the top of there, I mean, they probably got a two foot piece in here possibly. But I'd have to tear it all apart to find that out to see where it goes all the way up to that transition all the way down. But again, it really doesn't matter. It's still not strong enough regardless. It's just a piece of sheet metal. So um, I'm going to show you what that looks like, what they did. And I've got a piece of this 20 gauge right here. We use this for some stitchings, but that's what it is. 
and they've got the wood inside there and then what they did is they just took and folded one side so that completed it over here but the other side was cut and then they were able to get staples in there so, but that's basically what they've got inside there we'll go back over here and I'll show you I've got it open and this is where some of the failures come in they should have had when they framed this they should have accommodated for a really good heavy steel plate at the bottom at least but you should be able to let me find that flashlight Should be able to see that staple in there. See it right there. That's a staple. You're not going to fire a staple. You can see how much it dimpled in. You're not going to get a, you know, a staple through some heavy steel like that. It would just bend. You wouldn't be able to get it to ram in there. So, but anyhow, like I said, so now what I'm trying to do is figure out a good solution to make that plate to the bottom, which seems pretty simple. Just put it there, but it, it really isn't quite that simple. So. But I'll get it. I just got to figure out how we're going to cut it and get it in there and get basically a, um, a shoe or a plate, if you will, that'll sit right like that. So it'll sit on there, you know, and hold it up. So all the pressure now would be sitting on that in on the jack in the frame. Because all that will be bolted in, but it would still be on the actual jack. So that's, that's what I want to do. Right, on this, uh, this is the driver's rear corner. And this thing is really rotted. I think I showed that the other day right in here it's all split it is all split in there Let me get the camera in there you can see how rotted matter of fact it's already deteriorated the fiberglass right here so now I'm trying to take there's a piece of metal right here this is some of the I don't know who worked on this but from what I understand he paid somebody to do this work and the best solution they came up with was putting this diamond plate on they riveted it to the fiberglass well this is still all rotted down here all of this and one of the things I noticed, which I thought were kind of interesting, maybe even creative at that point, but there's a screw right here, and it's a bolt. There's a nut on the other side. See if we can show you that. There's a nut right here. Yeah, there's another one right here. <laughs> Where is it? Right. Bear with me. There you go. There's a screw. There's another one, right? Is that it there? Yeah, that's it right there. That, that one was taken off. So it keeps spinning. So that was kind of interesting of how they... The only way they get it together is actually bolt it down in here to keep the door in because there's no stock in there. So I have to remove all this at least. i got to remove that much. So That's what I'm working on. And uh, I'll let you know some more. I've uh, figured out a design for that front, and I'll show it to you when it's done. That'll carry it, and I'm trying to do the same with this. I'm trying to figure out a better design to carry this whole end. Like I was telling you, these, really in my opinion, this portion here should be the part that carries, and this should be the part that stabilizes, because that's where all the weight is, is right there. So I'm going to try and renegotiate that, and I'll, I'll figure it out here shortly. When I do, I'll let you know my remedy on that too. I loosen up this uh, phylon that was right here. I got that piece off. You can see how much rot we got right here. And it's just, it's really bad. You can see all that right there. And something else I noticed. I don't know if this is related or not. I see a 2x4 in there. Yeah, right here. There you go. See a 2x4 in there. I wonder if that's put in there to prop up something up inside there. But this whole corner, I'm getting around this scaffold. This whole corner is all rotted. That's what I'm trying to negotiate. You gotta get in here. Take this off. That won't matter nothing. Kind of gives you an idea of what we got. So this is what's called ply foam. This piece is glued to this one right here. And then that's how the whole wall is assembled. But you can see there's no strength right here at all. So all of that is just being pulled. And then up here is where we noticed there's two pieces right here. See, there's one there and one there. I'm not really liking that. I'm trying to figure out how to negotiate around it without tearing everything apart. You can see they got another plate. I don't think you can see that metal plate right in there. Let's see if we get a little closer. See that metal plate? That's what they used to just kind of join them together, it looks like to me. And this is a lance. It'd be, you know, from what people tell me, they're supposed to be better built but they just seem to be the same to all of them. 
But if I were to, I really can't take this off. I don't think that's going to be in the works, this whole back wall. I have to take out all there too and everything. And what is this here? Um, not sure what that is. I don't know if it's the hot water tank or the back end of the refrigerator. I may be able to just take that frame out if I really had to. But if I can just open this up enough to get inside there, that's all I'd need. Just enough to get inside there to try to sleeve some stock up inside there and catch all that. That would be awesome. And that's what I'm shooting for, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen that way. So some of these things you got to slow down and punt. I was watching a couple of videos on uh, YouTube, and even like some of these people that say they can do all this stuff here, they give their guys training um, about five days, and they say, yeah, they can do all sorts of structural repairs and so forth for five days of training. I hardly would think this is, this would be a little bit more than five days for the training. You come out of Burger King, hey, I want to be an RV roof installer. And you get out of that place and they train you in five days. And then they give you your job. Say, so go out and do that roof out there and put the coating on. But uh, this is a little bit more than that. <laughs> I'll bet you need six days here. <laughs> we got us some visitors. That's good eating out there. Little chocolate sauce. Stuff delicious. I've seen them do it on National Geographic. Make a cuisine out of those ants. Delicio. There's another one. He's trying to get away. Trying to find some other village. I got this piece off of here. So we pulled that off. And they had all this adhesive on there. All glued in there. Just some caulking. Just got it stuck. It was kind of a pain in the butt to take off. But we got it out. I'll have to replace it with something else. But what it did is it went up here and it stapled behind here and it stapled behind here. And these got dropped in it and this one got fed up inside this way. So that's what it was just uh, very similar to this one here except it had two on here. You have this one coming on the top and there's, there's another one on the bottom. Actually, here I'll show you. So this is the piece right here. See? See how it's got kind of that channel there? All right, so it went up like that. So I'll just make another one. Not a big deal. Okay, so then I got on to here. I started to take this apart. This is what the jacks were screwed to. You can see just how many screws they had. It's all split apart in there. What a mess. So I said, well, it's got to come out. But all I do is put this in here, and you can see it already wants to come out. Boy, that's scary. That thing could have collapsed at any time. That's already coming out right there. You can see it. See? Look at there. Boom. She's out. All done. So I'll have to take this piece out and then I got to stitch it together. I'm probably going to run some steel down here. If I run the steel the way I'm thinking, if I put a big piece of steel in here, I can put a flange to carry that. And then I can have it come all the way down here and then put another little shoe, if you will, or a brace to catch it like this way. You see, so it'll sit right on that, like a shelf. So that's my kind of my plan. I just have to get it apart and take a lot of measurements and see how I fabricate it up. But that would be a perfect little fix, because now you can screw it right into that steel. The steel would be, you know, obviously joined in back to the frame, but all that load would be shifted. And I'd fix all this and strengthen it all up. We'd put some more struts and everything. Obviously, this is going to get replaced, replaced. You know, this goes inside. I'm not going to replace all that, but I will throw some mold kill on there. Because then I'll get inside the cabinet, and it's really not necessary. It's just wallpaper on the other side of this eighth inch. That's all it is. And then I'll replace this little stick and everything and reframe around. There's some on the other side, too, that I showed you earlier that was coming apart. So we'll reframe all that and put it together, and then we'll jump on the other side. But, you know, I'll show you how I get this together. But, you, like I said, you would expect more from Lance than just putting a couple of pieces of wood there. I mean, look at how many screws I put in. You can see them all here. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine you get nine at least nine screws there which split it all and then you got these over here one two three four five six seven there going into this little piece of one by side that's why it's all that's why it's all tore apart see look at there that is uh plus these little screws here that they use to frame it together that's way too many <laughs> screws that's why it all splintered apart all right so obviously got the piece out it came out big chunks right there all rotted but this bolt that they had holding that piece there's nothing there 
it's just the that's the back side of the wall panel the eighth inch so it just got bolted into the eighth inch that's all that was ever about so, I hope this wasn't I'm looking at it I'm just hoping that it wasn't a Lance deal because it looks pretty crummy the way it was put together if that be in the case so but even still these ones here these screws they weren't hitting anything in here see you see the screws right there all right this board is only uh, let's see I can take this piece out and show you because I got to replace it anyways the board is barely like three quarters of an inch wide yeah See if we can. There we go. See how wide that is? See the screw? It's on the other side of the board. See? That, that's just sank right in there because that's the other side of the panel. See if I can show you this way. So, yeah, it barely bought, bit in there. Bought, barely bit in there. <laughs> it barely got it. And it split that other board behind it. That's what it did. Those screws. So. But uh, I appreciate everybody watching our videos. We don't have a video guy. We just, you know, I get to work. I pick up a camera. I just want to show you. We don't have someone who runs around. We're not trying to be famous out here. We're just trying to educate people. So some of these YouTube channels, they have camera people to run around and so forth. Uh, we're just trying to get work done. But when I see it, I want to show it. And they go, oh, give me a camera. I'll just show it. So that's why it's kind of the way it is. You know, we, uh, again, we don't have all that fancy dancy stuff. The videos, we don't have all those fancy um, graphics and everything. It's just, you know, we're just trying to get information out there. And actually, that we post a lot of these so the customer can see all of what we do to their coach, what we find, what's going on. But they really don't care about all the fancy stuff either. So they just want to know what happened, what we fix, what did it look like, that type of thing. So I noticed this little bit right here, but I'm going to have to cut that anyways and run a piece of steel so it doesn't seem to be too bad much further back but other than that I'd have to take the whole entire wall out I don't know if it's really worth doing all that so but uh, let me free up some of this and I'll, I'll keep you posted as we go along well like I said I'm not going to take this back wall off thought it'd be a lot of work which it was took the door out took the door off took all this corner mold off then when I started poking in here and I loosened up I was looking and I went hey guess what it's not even glued on well, as it was, all the glue, glue has failed. There is some there. That looks like a little bit of whatever construction adhesive. I don't know what brand, but if you look on the back here, there's nothing. See? Nothing there. So whatever it was didn't stick too well. So now we're going to take it off and do it right. And then uh, you can see they've got that fine finger joint right there. That is terrible. All that finger joints, they're just worthless. If I can get you in there to show you, see if I can get my camera right. It is right here. There's the piece. Yeah. That's a fingered board. That's what they call them. Uh, you don't use that. Those are filler boards. Those are something you would put like, uh, we'll say you're building a house and you've got the inside corner and you need to have, you bring a drywall on this side and you don't have something there to screw the, side, the uh, drywall to. You use that junk. Well, it is a filler. You don't use it for structurality. I've seen that before. We did a um, ultralight on there. It's actually a super light, but I think it's identified as an ultralight. And uh, that's how they did the roof system with those. And it, it failed very badly. So you can watch that afterwards. So, like I said, we're going to take this out and then uh, we're going to re glue it and laminate it back on. Got to get it on there. Because without this being glued, you're not going to have the back and forth which is the rack or the shear factor that you need so we need to get that back on there and besides that it'll actually help me get inside here to get all of this fixed right and I've already got it in my head we're gonna put a piece of one and a half inch square stock in here steel and it's gonna go all the way up into here and I'll have a flange up there where I can secure it to that top frame but I have a shelf right here for this too main wall to sit on it'll have a shelf and that'll have another tab that'll come up much like the way my hand is and then it'll run all the way down and I'm going to do the same thing here and it'll come down and it'll return back in here so I'll have another shelf right here to carry this is the bumper so I'll get, be able to pick all of that up when I'm moving it so that's our best fix this had that diamond plate on there obviously all destroyed probably gonna have to put it back on or 
think of some sort of remedy for that mess. And then uh, they ran it all the way around here too because they had so many issues with that, I guess. So that's what they did. But we're going to try and remedy some of this stuff for them and, and get it done right. But this is the worst of it I see. The front corners, those are going to be a lot easier. I've already got those fabricated in my head. Just got to draw them out and get them, get them completed. But, uh, all right, upward and onward. Okay, so uh, you can see what the mess we got going on here. Took this rotted piece out, and then uh, we noticed this was rotted. You can see I took the door out, took the door out there. That's all rotted over there. Got to reframe this whole section back in here. Got to fix this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and that, and everything else. And then uh, I was getting in on this one, and they've got, this looks like a two by six runs all the way back there so I gotta try to free that up to be able to stitch a new piece in here so that's what I'm working on but most of this is just it's all rotted so bad so this was the wall that wasn't glued that well all right, this is where we're at so far so I welded this piece in here see this big piece of steel you just gotta secure it up in here and then I'm gonna put some strapping in here too but we're gonna get this framed out you know, afterwards. But now, when that piece is bolted to here and the, and the ram jack is, as it's lifting, it's going to be pushing on this. And there's a lip, a ledge on this. There's a ledge right here. Okay, a little shelf for this to carry. We'll secure this in here. Once we get that secured in there, then when it pushes, it's pushing the whole thing. But it's also welded. Not only did I weld it, we're going to bolt it as well. Now, this thing is not going anywhere. So I originally was going to bring it around and do all this, but the way this whole dynamics worked, it was just unnecessary for all that work. This will hold just fine. And then what I'll do is fill this in with some wood so the whole thing will come to be back together. i got to do the same to the other side. I'll right, give you a little update here. So i got this piece of steel in here. So that's going to carry everything. I actually thought that bumper was part of the frame, and then uh, this was rotted under here. So we've got a big 2x6 in there. We've got a 2x4 shooting over that way. And then uh, we got it all cinched back, but actually the bumper is mounted to all of that. We started taking out the screws to access it, the bumper just wanted to drop down. So we've got it all bolted here, so it is still going to work in the same concert that I was talking about, because we're going to be putting that jack right here, and it'll be pushing up. There's a ledge right here that's sitting on this board. You can see we've got it all glued and screwed, so it's not going anywhere. And that's what we're working on right now. We came around this other side. And we tore a whole bunch of stuff off. We're trying to fit this piece in. We got this piece fixed right in here. And then uh, you can see all this, this is all called fingered. Those are fingered joints. This is scrap wood. The reason I use it, or the only reason somebody would opt to use it, is because it's a lot cheaper than actually buying real lumber. So, but you can see they've got this one spliced here. So then I'm even gonna take tape measure out and just check. And then this piece, Oh, nine inches. There's this one. There's that one there. See? About a nine inch span. They've got it everywhere. You've got it here. You've got it everywhere. I would have expected more out of Lance than this. Uh, there is a lot of glue on it. That's one thing I can say they did. They've had some glue here we had to take off. So that's a plus. But you don't want to use fingered lumber for this. That's just not at all. So even this little brace here that we put on here. To pull this whole corner assembly together that's all been stitched in glued as well and then uh, we still got all that other side so right now we're just working with this and then i want to try and probably get some shear bracing going across i got to see how much material i have but we're going to glue on the the uh, this back wall but you can see they had some glue here but none of it was really staying so i don't know if they just it, it failed before or cured out before they actually got you know to putting it on that's a possibility because you can see like how much was here but you can see right there that actually looks like the tube of the caulking it doesn't even look like it's squashed not like this see that looks like it's been squashed in but this doesn't really look like it took at all so but like i said they do have some it just it just didn't stay so when we put this on we're going to fasten the uh sheathing on here and then we're going to get the get everything all put together that way that's the only way we probably could do it you know, so to make sure that it's on there real well. So we got to clean up some of this stuff here because it's kind of bulky. So, but anyhow, that's that's where we're on. And you know, next clip something may change. I may go, ah, oh, we couldn't do it this way because of that. And I don't know. But when we keep rolling along, that's one thing about these. There's always a twist to them, and you have to kind of learn how to 
uh, downshift and hit a lower gear and keep plugging along because sometimes this stuff will really slow you down. But one thing for sure, you don't want to go backwards and have to redo it all. On this side, this is the driver's side. We had all that rot in there, so we just cut this bit out. Up underneath this, all underneath the side here, because this is the bathroom, this is a shower. Um, there's all holding tanks in there. There's all holding tanks in there. So for, obviously, the commode and the, the shower and everything. So all we do is we cut this. And then what we're going to do is we want to make sure it still gets strength because this big piece was sitting on here and that's how the whole board went. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of steel, put a piece of steel in here, and we may have to get around these screws. But they're all jammed up in there and it's not worth trying to do all that. So we'll put the piece of steel in here. It'll go up underneath this. It'll go up underneath there a little bit, which will give us some strength. We can fasten it down here. We'll have to go around this one, but that'll carry the brunt of it. Plus, we're going to glue it and screw it to this, the new piece. So there'll still be plenty of strength on there, but it was just starting to be a real pain in the tail to try to... We couldn't do anything with that holding tank. We'd really start opening up a bag of worms. So we got some more on this side that we're trying to take care of. And we made this cut, and we're going to rebuild all this. On the other side, I'll show you what we did over here. We got this pretty much all framed out. It still needs a skin on it. And then if you see what we got here, they, we put that piece in there. And that's a piece of plastic framing. And that is in there because that's a thin piece of wood. And it's only a piece of three quarter. That trim mold, which is down here, right there. See all those screw holes in it? Look at all those. You start flying all those screws right through this, you're gonna you know, right through this piece, you're gonna end up splitting it. Also to shape this out like we did, I had this piece of uh, Advantech, and Advantech's a really good material by the way, but this piece of Advantech, even though it is an OSB, you still don't want to be putting screws in there, because it's not going to hold well, it's not going to hold like a piece of wood, but again, the wood being as thin as it is, it would still, that would, this wood would split, this it wouldn't hold it well, so it'll hold well in this plastic, you can put as many as you want in there, you never split it. So what we did is uh, we glued and screwed this to here with a different type of screw. You're saying you can't screw to it, but it's a lamination screw. That's what it is. Uh, let's see, I don't think I even have one around to show you. But anyhow, it looks like a big um, cork screw is what it looks like. And they're all the way back here. <laughs> they're pretty long. But we piloted them, and then again we glued them. But you don't need nearly as many. We only put a few in there to hold it, and the glue is carrying the rest of it. So we'll put that skin back on, we can put that trim back on, and everything will sit nice and tight. We uh, redid all of this up here too. We had to get up inside here. This is pretty strong. There's a piece of steel in there. Matter of fact, this piece goes to the steel. That's in there just to pull it forward and to hold it tight. But that steel runs for a ways. So I'm satisfied with that. will be okay. Over here on this side, to pull this whole corner assembly together, we used grade 8 bolts right here. So those go through the bumper because the bumper actually bolts on. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, but the bumper actually is bolted to this. So we got a 2x6 here, 2x4 here, and um, then we put the piece of steel in. That's carrying that load. So now when this jack comes up, this whole steel is going to be able to pull everything all together in concert like it should. And then we glued it. You can see all the glue we got in there. Everything is glued and screwed, glued and screwed, glued and screwed. We'll put our skin on there, and then she's going to look real nice. And again, we're working on this over here. We'll frame all that back bottom end in and everything. And then take care of anything else that we see that may have been an issue. We're going to double check everything on here. Looks like we might have tagged that just a bit. It's a good thing it's way down in there. But we're going to double check it to make sure. But it was jammed up against there. It looks like there's no room. There's no room for that. So that was a real slight uh, slice there. So we want to make sure all our wires are good. We'll check all this and make sure everything's doing well before we just start sewing some stuff up, that's for sure. So that's about where we're at so far. Like I was showing you about this glue, you can see it's got big clumps in it. So it just didn't hold very well at all. It released, I don't know what brand it is, uh, but this is just a regular underlayment type glue. That's all it is. So well, sometimes if some moisture gets underneath there, it will release, and that may have been what happened. Uh, the products we use, it doesn't do that. Actually, the, the products we use are moisture cured. So if moisture hits it, it's actually a help. It'll help cure it out. So, but uh, that's where we're at so far. Next clip coming up. We got some new decking going on our lance.
we are gluing the decking down. We got quarter inch decking going down on top of this. We want it to burp out right there. We want to see it all. They want to go to you. Yeah. Go to you, huh? I know, but see that boogered edge by your hand? Oh, I got it. Push it to you. We'll cut that boogered edge off. Come on, come on. There you go. That's us. That's us. We're good. And we set some cinder blocks. You can see how strong these things are. We got a whole bunch of cinder blocks on there. They're strong. We got some support inside, though. That's because we're trying to distress it up so when it all glues together it'll even be more rigid. Say quiet, quiet I say on the set. Doing some productions here. Alright, let's see what we got going on. Now this hall rebuilt over here as you can see we got this all skinned back. We reframed all the bottom. We put some more steel straps around here to pull this whole assembly like we did over there that we showed you. So all we really did that you probably haven't seen step by step is just us putting this glue on on here. That's all. So and then we just glued this on. We got our wires right here for the uh, jack assembly. And we got this piece of steel, so we're gonna start getting all this cleaned up as well. So we still gotta put another piece up at the top of uh, Luan, and then we're gonna put the back wall on. So that's where we're at so far. We did the same on the opposite side. See if I can get around all this mess for you. Trying to show you, because we just kinda, we're just trying to bring it back together so it's all in the same plane, if you will, the same level. So we can, um, you can see we got this on here, we stitched all that back in there. So this way the file line will lay straight. This is all a mess, obviously. So we're probably going to epoxy this together. We'll have that bracketry on here. Hopefully most of that won't show, but then the other thing we're probably going to do is skin it with some white vinyl. We got just like vinyl that you would put on like a sign or, you know, a wrap of your vehicle or something like that. We can do that and put it on there. It's just not worth trying to cut all this, I don't think. So, uh, but if we epoxy it all back together, it'll be real strong. It's going to get glued anyways, and then uh, we'll just put epoxy in here, clean it up, and then we put that white on there to look nice and clean. So, everything else is, like you said, is pretty much all set. Got all the doors cut out and everything ready to put all that back together. So, okay. so that's what we're doing up there. Is getting uh, going to get another piece of of a wall. So on theirs, they did not have it fastened to this, no glue to it, or at least the glue they had didn't take. That's what it was. You can see all the glue that was up there. It just didn't take. So it's just looked like it dried out. So it just released everything. So that's what we're doing now is making sure it's fastened in, glued on there. That's what we did. We stapled this all together. We've got glue behind there. So it's gonna be real strong. And then one more piece to go. We're working there. So on the roof, we got the roof going down. That's what we're doing right here. That's the membrane, the back side of it. So we're just balancing the roof out left to right. And uh, once we do that, we're gonna glue it down. All right, we got the roof rolled out. It's all glued. Let's see all the glue under there, actually. We got our protector strips on here. So now we already did that other side. We just rolled this other side here and uh, got busy. I don't think I showed those clips. And now we're using this big heavy roller, and that's what pushes it down. Now where all the seams are, I don't know if you can see them, there's a protective strip here where all the decking comes together because we redecked this one. So may be able to see the protective strips on there and like I said now we're just packing it down with that big heavy roller make sure she's nice and tight so the next step is to get in there and get all the holes for the vents and anything else and the plumbing and so forth and once we get all those you can start seeing that come out now that we're rolling over it that protective strip there and also this one back here. And then now once we get all those holes cut, curves go on, we start putting the roof together. This is real sturdy now. We went over this deck with some quarter inch on this. You see right there? I believe we showed that. We did show that pick, that clip. This is the piece that goes to the jack. This is the part that goes on the corner and this all gets bolted in, okay? So what we did, uh, welded a shelf on here so it'll carry and it'll sit up in there. I couldn't make it too much bigger because there's other stuff underneath there, but that'll be enough to grab the framing on both ways. And then uh, it just gets bolted to this. So we've got most of the siding all together. 
show you down here. We got this whole side done. Just trying to get this door in. We got a new piece of phylon we put on here. And then I've got a piece of molding I'll put up on here. And that'll dress it out. And I'm just starting to get this back in. This is the corner mold that goes around there. And checking that door. He didn't want a new door. We're just trying to see if we can locate one. Um, right now we got this clamped to hold the door in place but we can't get in there with a with a drill to put the screws back in because of this bracing we've already got this bracing all set up because we're working on the roof as well all at once so we got the this we're gonna have to clean up as well so we've got we got it moving along got to put that back wall on we'll have that done here shortly we're just giving you some updates all right she is coming together we got all the doors back on, we got the uh, hot water tank back in, got all our trim on. We're going to put a piece of trim across here, and then uh, we put a new piece of phylon on here because this was so bad. But uh, what we're going to end up doing is, we, I don't think we're going to put a piece of trim there. We're probably going to clean it up, and I'll probably put a piece, of, um, a piece of maybe vinyl wrap on there just to kind of make it look good. Or maybe I'll put pinstripe on there or something just to conceal it, but we'll epoxy and clean all that up. So, you know we got the big stock, that big one and a half by one and a half piece of steel you remember that's in there so now we got to get these bolted on there let me show you what we did because this thing is pretty cool all right a lot of times you get out and you're going to have to tap something into it right you got to get something to thread into that steel i don't want to put lag bolts back in there they're not going to hold you wouldn't get them in that steel is way too thick we literally have to tap that steel so how are we going to do it the other the old-fashioned way is drill it out put a tap in there and keep doing this well this is what i got this is a drill bit, and then once the drill bit goes in, you can see right here, it threads it right there. It, that, it's not uh, stripped right there, that's the design of it. And then it'll thread all that steel right there. Once we get all that, we upgraded to these Mamu bolts. That's gonna pull it all in. So now, that's what we're working on over here. Set that down. That's what we're working on over here. We're getting the bolts in right here, you can see. So we're gonna, we already got them, we tested them. So now what we're gonna do is probably put some lock nuts on them, lock washers. And then uh, we're also gonna put some lock thread. Oops, we're gonna put some lock thread on these. We'll put some lock thread on there so they won't back out. And the lock thread we're gonna use is the same product we've been using through this whole coach, is M1. That stuff is an adhesive. So what it's gonna do is when it, it'll lock the threads in, but the other advantage to it is that it will absorb shock where if you put like an epoxy, you put like something that's gonna get crystallized or harden up too much, then it won't be able to absorb the shock at all from these things. So that's why we're gonna use the M1. We're gonna put it right in there and this thing is gonna be stout. So we're gonna put one, two, three, four, then we can put the other four on the other side. We put that other plate on there. And I tell you, that thing is gonna be strong as a bowl. And uh, then we also fix the front. We epoxy the whole front. So you'll go around the other side. So most of this is all together. Just Got to get that door on, a couple cosmetic things here. And then uh, in here, they do have a steel plate that goes all the way up. I showed that earlier, so I kept investigating. The steel plate doesn't look so bad. The only thing I didn't like is that the wood that it was attached to was all splintered up. Well, I can't get that out. I'd have to take all of this apart. So what we did, you can see it right here. We just kept pushing and pushing and pushing this epoxy. And this particular epoxy is rated for 150,000 PSI. So I think that's going to do the job right there. <laughs> and now we're going to put those right back in there. And again, we're going to put M1 on there to absorb the shock. And we're going to put this piece on because we made the shelf. So this is the piece we made up. Put a little shelf on it. So now when it goes up, we're going to trim this back right here. We're going to trim all that. When it goes back, now it's sitting... See, it's sitting right up underneath there. See if that camera's getting you right. Doesn't look it from the screen. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna have that shelf where now when it lifts up, when it lifts up, it'll be literally be pulling from here instead of putting the stress on the bolts. The bolts will keep it in place. This little shelf that I made is going to push it up to hold all this, you see? So that's how we got, I did the two of them the same way on the front. And uh, that should get us. I think we're going to be all back tight together. So the, uh, that's an update where we're at so far. The other side, going around this big old jimmy that I got. 
It's a 366 big block. Uh, 87 model right there. All right, so you can see we got all this back together as well. Put a new piece of Phylon on here because they had all that diamond plate on there. It looked terrible. So like I said, we'll put a nice piece of trim on here. So now on the other side, you notice we had that other one up. It was up a little higher. And uh, what we may do, like I said, on the other side, if I when I get it back together, I may put a piece of pinstripe on there just to take the um, the seam away. And then what I'll do, even though it doesn't have one here, I may just put another one on this side. So just so it looks even. That's all. Maybe if we can find some, maybe some black. Maybe just put a black stripe coming across somewhere, or maybe a black. I don't know. Dress it out somehow so it looks clean, like it's supposed to be there. But um, that's where we're at so far. So we got all the trim on here. And everything door back in everything's all pulled back together we got the bumper bolted in the bumper is bolted into that to this piece that we got this big heavy duty piece right in here it's all bolted back in so again as this is lifting it's pushing everything is all bonded together you got to bolt it down here with grade 8 bolts into the bumper so when it lifts and that you know the jack comes down and it's starting to push up all that stress is right here on these steel bars and you're gonna have all those four three eighths inch bolts that we're going to put in there so it's going to be strong it's going to be super strong i would be shocked if this thing failed <laughs> i mean there's just no other way i could think of it besides like literally weld the whole new entire frame right so i think we got it whooped here so all this is we uh, put this piece in because this was rotted as well from the other plate so again but the other plate should cover most of this and if it doesn't we'll dress it out no i'll get it looking clean that's what we do here so and then this is the original fiberglass backing that we put on. It's the same one. All we do is put that sheeting on there that you saw. Got it all sheeted and we glued this back to the wall after we made all those repairs. So it's coming together. It's coming all together. Right, we finally got this thing done. Boy, what an ass kicker this was. All right, you saw how we put all the steel back in there and everything. So then what we did is went around the whole coach and we caulked everything. Went around, tore out all that ugly caulking and the stuff that wasn't any good. Went around every single thing around here and re it. So then uh, one of the things over here, when we were doing this project, we had an issue with the siding and we had to scrap it. So what I did is I just put a decal up on there. Probably got to clean it up just a little bit. But I put one right there to kind of match this over here just so it blends in. And then uh, since I had to do it that way, uh, I guess I had to do it over here as well. Let's see it come around my scaffold a little bit. I thought I'd do this one as well. But just trying to make it kind of match like it's supposed to be there in a way. You can tell these two pieces, this lower one is newer. But at least it looks pretty clean. Um, it's probably not going to go into better uh, RV campers and gardens or anything like that. So we've got everything all done. We've got to put a new awning on here. We put one on the slide out as well. Again, we sealed all around. All of that. Everything's all sealed up real well underneath. Went around obviously this side here. And then, uh, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pull this scaffold. We got it on casters. So I'm going to take them in. I'm going to pull it all over and I'll show you the roof. This is what we got on the roof. Have you seen the other videos? Or they were all, I mean, this is the way we designed the roof system. So I had to make a double one here. This had the double. And then it also had the plumbing. That's all one big curb component. It's all one big piece. And then it also has a counter flash right here. So when water tries to come across the roof, it'll come up here and hit, and it'll get directed around and get off. Now, obviously, you'll have water coming on, but you're trying to keep the main rush of the water off the roof deck or that's coming off the roof deck up against any caulkings or anything like that. You don't want that erosion effect to happen. So that's really the purpose for all of this. So this is your flashing, this is your counter flashing. And uh, we also do the same for the boots. We've got those boots over there. And those sit right down inside. They're screwed down, so they're fastened. They, there's a plate that goes around the actual arm. There's a plate, and then we put the screws in there. And then once we do that, we load it. So that's all loaded. We've got another plumbing over there, did the same thing. The way I designed these plumbing caps and this whole assembly is that this thing pops off it's still sealed and the water would end up running down into the holding tank it, it still can't go into the roof deck so you get the same one here the same counter flashing you have the same flashing going here all heat welded that's all heat welded it is all heat welded from here to here so you're not going to get 
uh, you don't have to put caulking here or anything at all. When the uh, person comes back, when the customer comes back for an inspection, that's what we're going to be looking for is just make sure all the caulking is seated well and make sure it's still bonded in there. And, and some of this boogerage that you see here, we try to clean up the best we can. But some of that, that's primer. And sometimes the primer will turn jaundice. And it really is sometimes hard to get off. But uh, you need to have the primer on there for the product. Now this is M1. And I know a lot of people ask when they watch the videos of products we're using. This is a GAF 60 mil commercial membrane. That's what it is. It's a structured membrane. This is the actual product here. If you want a sample, we'll send you one out. But this is a sample. You got our website there, rvroofinstall.com, rvroofinstall.com. We got the month and we got the year we put this on so we can monitor it. This is a 20 year system. So, what, but what this piece in particular is, this is a sample of the roof system. And you can see those little squares in the back there. There's a mesh built into this piece. So that gives it strength against hail and also tree branches. And what I did is I just welded these two colors to it and you can get them in all three colors. You know, some coaches come in, the tan looks better, maybe the gray will look better, but we have the white, tan, the, the white, tan, and gray. Those are common colors that uh, GAF stocks in the Evergard, and that's what this is, GAF brand Evergard. And uh, the, 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 this reflects the most UV light of any product on the market today. There's only one other product that reflects more light than this, and GAF makes that as well, and it's called Extreme. Um, and ironically, this, which is kind of odd, if you will, this is a 60 mil, and there's a 20 year warranty, but the Extreme is a 50 mil, and it reflects more light, and on a camper and on a coach, they'll extend a 20 year warranty, but if I were to put it on a commercial building, they'd extend to 25, so. Now, in the front of the AC, got the same curb design as all these other ones. Now the water is going to keep running down here, and as it does, I don't want the water to trickle in the front here and get into that foam gasket. There's a foam gasket up on the side there. So the way this bottom is designed, there's a lot of extrusion, if you will, so when water does hit that, it'll roll out. It'll have trouble trying to get back there. But in the front, I didn't want it to hit there and then just take all that brunt of the a storm or the water or anything that's coming in. I didn't want it to come in at it at all or when it runs down the cap. So I designed this flashing detail here that goes up, over, and in. So any water that hits that has to come out. And then again, once it comes out, it's going that way. It's getting out of the way. So there's there his emergency hatch. So we, again, same curb design. And then um, when we put all these in here, you can see when you uh, we put these on here, and we put the M1 down. We load, I don't use butyl here. So when that's flipped over, we load it with butyl. We set it down and then we put the screws in. And you can see all the caulking that's around the screws. Those are from when you drive the screw in, the caulking will start to pull up towards the head of the screw. And when it does, it makes like a grommet. And then you don't have to do anything to it. Leave it alone, it's done. And you don't have to send these things down to the bowels of hell torque them down they're fine so that's uh then on the sides here everything gets two strikes so you get we have m1 behind here and then when we put this gutter rail on see how it's all sealed we put the gutter rail on whatever burps out we strike down once that cures out we're going to come back you can faintly see some of the primer in there we're going to put another strike of m1 on there when that cures we're going to put another strike so technically, I guess you'd say there's three layers of M1 in this. And uh, it's a super strong product, so you're not going to have any issue with it for sure. Especially if you use the primer. Have to use the primer. Can't stress that enough. So that's basically the... Now, the reason why we do all those strikes, let me get to that. And this is a brand of Lexel. Uh, I use this as a sample because you can see all the air bubbles in it. So as you're going along and you're caulking, one of those air bubbles is going to get injected in there. So as the air bubbles in there, now the coach is just racking, twisting, flexing, just vibrating. That's gonna, that may possibly, the air bubble that is, may possibly breach and now you got a hole. So my thought is if I put another layer on top of that layer, what are the chances of having one air bubble hit on top of another one? Uh, I'd probably hit the lottery four times a year if that ever happened. So, then now we did the same design for your refrigerator vent over there. And then lastly what we do is we also fabricate these stands 
we fabricate all those as well. So everything here is all done in-house. Uh, and all that does is just give it some balance. I could take them out and the air conditioner would still be fine. The heaviest portion is up near the front. But I just like to give it some balance anyways. To me, it's just a prudent idea. And then this was a slide-out awning that we put on here. We put that on. So that's, uh, that's our Lance. And she's ready to go. A lot of work into this. Really, a lot of work. And it was all small, little things. You know, at the end of the day, I remember one day we were working on this thing and trying to get all these pieces to fit. And I kind of chuckled and said, gee whiz, I couldn't believe it took me all day to put it in seven pieces. I think it was, on, uh, it was on the opposite side because that one was worse than this side. But just to try to make the pieces and fabricate them to put them all together, it does take a lot of time. And because everything has to line up with something else because now it's existing. So you have to make sure your thickness is the right, dimensions are right and everything. So everything's going to flow because other layers are coming together as well. And this is the one where, you know, you remember we still got the steel inside on the both sides. And this thing is rocking and rolling going up and down. It, it barely squiggles or, or racks at all. It is super, super tight. So uh, we appreciate you watching. And again, you can go to our website, rvroofinstall.com. And also, if you're on YouTube, you can just go watch some more videos. There's a lot of information around. And if you're going to do these, for a firm believer, do it once. Don't do it again. Uh, I don't think I even mentioned these. Now, these are strips that we put in because we did redeck this roof. So this is where the decking comes together. That's the seam of the decking. There's another one you may faintly be able to see by the, by the air conditioner. And then yet one more up there by, the, um, by that escape hatch. So what we did is this is the same. It's just a piece of roofing. That's it. The roll comes 10 foot wide. So instead of the coach isn't 8 foot wide, no coaches or even this camper for that matter. So instead of throwing away a good piece, what we do is we take it and make rips out of it and then we'll put them in here. We glue them down and then this is glued to that. And uh, that just helps to make sure that there's no chipping or any fasteners or anything like this. This isn't fastened anyways, we glue everything. But just to make sure it keeps it tight. That's really what it is. Here's another one over here. Hopefully, there we go, the focus is in a little better. So there's another one right there. You can see it going along. So we put those in. Not only did we put them on there, we also put them on the edge where it comes over. And that's to protect the edge of the main roofing so it'll fold over and make it look really nice and straight as it's coming around. Because you've got to really pull that down pretty good. And with 60 mil, it's kind of tough to do that. But if you take your time, you can. We make a jig up and we use that. That's how we do ours. But uh, like I said, we appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions, just give us a call. 423-475-7663. That spells the word roof. Thanks.